Our next reader is reading from a World Book Night title, and I don't know if you've had a chance to peruse the list. Um, I just, I'm excited by how eclectic it is, how familiar some of it is, and how surprising some of it is. That's the great joy, I think, of this list uh, this year. Uh, and I think every year so far. Um, Tracy Chevalier, during um, uh, rehearsals, somebody fondly referred to her as Trace, to which she said, the only person that calls me Trace is her postman. I'm not her postman. So reading from a girl with a pearl earring, please welcome Tracy Chevalier. Good evening. I'm going to read the sexiest scene in this book, though I'm not sure I can compete with the Borgias. <laughs> this is a story about a young woman who becomes a servant in the household of a very famous painter. They have a kind of meeting of the minds, and he decides to paint her. And um, I'm going to read this scene towards the end of the book where the painting's almost finished, but it needs a pearl earring added to it so that you can call it Girl with a Pearl Earring. And um, he's asked her to pierce her ear, which she's already done, and um, she's going to wear his wife's earrings. He reached around to the cupboard behind him, picked up an earring, and held it out to me. I want you to put it in, I said. I had not thought I could ever be so bold, nor had he. He stepped up to my chair. My jaw tightened, but I managed to hold my head steady. He reached over and gently touched my earlobe. I gasped as if I had been holding my breath underwater. He rubbed the swollen lobe between his thumb and finger, then pulled it taut. With his other hand, he inserted the earring wire in the hole and pushed it through. A pain like fire jolted through me and brought tears to my eyes. He did not remove his hand. His fingers brushed against my neck and along my jaw. He traced the side of my face up to my cheek then blotted the tears that spilled from my eyes with his thumb. He ran his thumb over my lower lip. I licked it and tasted salt. I closed my eyes then, and he removed his fingers. When I opened them again, he had gone back to his easel and taken up his palette. I sat in my chair and gazed at him over my shoulder, my ear was burning, the weight of the pearl pulling at the lobe. I could not think of anything but his fingers on my neck, his thumb on my lips. He was looking at me, but did not begin to paint. I wondered what he was thinking. Finally, he reached behind him again. You must wear the other one as well, he declared, picking up the second earring and holding it out to me. Why? can't be seen in the painting. You must wear both, he insisted. It is a farce to wear only one. But I only pierced one ear. Then you must tend to it. I reached over and took the earring. I did it for him. I got out my needle and clove oil and pierced my other ear. I did not cry or faint or make a sound. Then I sat all morning, and he painted the earring he could see, and I felt stinging like fire in my other ear, the pearl he could not see. Thank you.